Hi guys, welcome to another Game Jam devlog. Stingley from Slip Games, and in this one, uh, we're going to be looking at Metroidvania Month 15. So, this is a month long jam from February 15th to March 15th. Uh, I've never made a Metroidvania before, so this should be interesting. And I've also never done a month long Game Jam before. I'm going to be recording these videos a little bit differently. There's going to be no script, it's going to be me off the cuff, so let me know what you think about this format. Um, I really appreciate any kind of feedback because I've got no idea if this is going to work. So I've already done a little bit of prep work for this, uh, knowing it's a Metroidvania and knowing that I've never done a Metroidvania before. I haven't really played that many Metroidvanias before. Um, I started off by looking into what actually is a Metroidvania. Uh, I then went off and played lots of them. Apparently I'd already played Hollow Knight and didn't realise it was classed as a Metroidvania. Uh, I've been playing Guacamole, which is brilliant by the way. And um, I've come up with um, a few sort of ideas, if you like, a little introduction to my game, um, some various different areas that, um, that, that the player can explore. I'm a little worried about scope creep already, and obviously it depends on the theme, so we shall see how that works. Um, I've even plotted out my areas in a kind of a map um, using Figma. Uh, so you can see here we've got you know, uh, a beach and we've got sort of village, forests, mountains and so forth. And roughly the sort of general layout of how I think it would work. But again, like I say, it kind of depends on what the theme is and we'll find out what the theme is in a couple of hours time. So this is all probably going to change. Also, full disclosure, um, I have already created a sort of sample project for Metrovania um, XV and I've imported a player script that I have set up or had set up from one of my previous, um, previous game jams. You can see I've commented out loads of stuff. But what this basically gives me is um, a little player dude that um, I can control. And I've also been experimenting with LDTK, I think it's called, uh, to import the uh, level asset. So you can see I've just imported a sample level, stuck my player in it, and consequently when I actually uh, run the game, I can actually now sort of move around this level. Um, and I'm just using just a um, uh, an add-on to import this. It is pretty cool. I can't do much, there's not an awful lot to it, but yeah got the camera working and all that sort of good stuff so just noticed um, that whilst the game was running my debugger is going completely mental uh, so I wouldn't exactly say this is finished yet uh, yeah better see what the, what that's doing okay panic over um, it's just my uh, my previous game jam game script looking for inputs that don't actually exist anymore so that should be a fairly easy thing to sort out yeah that's much better um, in case you're wondering why have I bothered to um, use the same script from a previous game rather than writing an entirely new one from scratch uh, it's because I've done little things in it like coyote time and all that sort of stuff whereby you can jump oh. okay can't jump now uh, but you can jump off of the screen and um, oh, sorry jump off of a platform and sort of you've got you've got a, a, a sort of a split second before you actually drop down to press space again or press jump again and that gives you that sort of nice little nice little feature there whereby you you don't immediately plunge down okay it's theme time let's see what we've got to work with here uh, optional theme alchemy alchemy okay so it's the medieval forerunner of chemistry concerned with the transmutation of matter, in particular with attempts to convert base metals into gold or find a universal elixir. Hmm, okay. I'm going to have to do some looking into this and uh, see if I can work out what I'm going to do with it. So after looking into alchemy a little bit, uh, I came across this incredibly useful Wikipedia page, which goes into a tremendous amount of detail about all sorts of stuff to do with alchemy and uh, you know what it's all about but fundamentally um, I'm going to ignore most of it and concentrate on the fact that it talks about alchemy as a kind of a spiritual upgrading uh, 
um, that people used to use or used to believe in. Specifically this block here where it talks about esoteric interpretations of historical texts. Also linked to that article um, is another page about alchemical symbols. Um, you've got some primes, some basic elements and planetary metals and stuff like that. I'm thinking I might go with the elements, earth, air, fire and water, which I've got open up here. They are all basically um, symbolic of various different bits and bobs, including sort of emotion and intuition and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that maybe what I'll do is I will map the upgrades that the player can unlock to one of these classical elements in the game. And that'll be how I link into the theme. Okay, so it's uh, day two now, and I have basically just created another page within my notebook, um, copied and pasted the paragraphs from Wikipedia in here, and I've also gone through my upgrades and kind of associated, you know, fire and flaming attacks and so forth to uh, to various different upgrades. So, as you progress in the game, you will um, unlock. Philosopher's Stones, or you'll find Philosopher's Stones, maybe from shrines or something like that, and collecting those will grant you new abilities based on the alchemical classic elements. I've created a Trello workspace for the Metroidvania month 15, and I've just gone through and basically created a bunch of backlog tasks that I know I need to sort out. Um, I've got all these ones in here for the various different zones. This list looks rather intense. However, first up, I will be tackling player controls. Uh, in actual fact, they're actually already in progress, and I think once I've done the player controls, I'll probably start working on the player sprite after that. Um, in the player controls card itself, I have obviously a bunch of actions that I want to implement. I've already done walking and jumping and curdy time, uh, and that's it so far however I do need to consider adding in a state machine so we'll have to look at that okay so I have completely refactored my movement code for my player to the point whereby I probably didn't actually need to copy it over from an existing project to be honest I now have a state machine uh, running for idle run and air uh, this has been shamelessly ripped off of GD quest um, but it's really really good definitely worth looking at uh, previously my code looked a bit like this whereby there was lots and lots of cases and matches and things of that sort but now you can see it's all been commented out and in actual fact the player script is incredibly small basically just controlling different variables and there's a little function here to just tell me which direction the player is um, pressing the buttons. So instead of all of this code, what I have instead are much smaller chunks of code that sit within the state machine itself. So the idle code, for example, is this big, and all it really does is it controls where to go next, depending on given situations. So if, um, if the player presses jump, then we're going to transition to air with a message of do jump equals true. The air script then picks up on this message, and if it has do jump, then it will jump. And that function is down here, and it's pretty straightforward. The only difference, really, that I've added to this is that I've added in my coyote time um, that I had before, and I've also swapped around the actual um, movement code so that it's not so static. It actually features some lurping in and consequently the actual game feels much nicer. So yeah, I'm in a pretty good state now. And uh, now all I need to do is work on additional states. Okay, so I've added another um, state to my state machine now, the wall state, and I'm fairly happy with this. Um, effectively, what it does is reduces down the gravity based on the wall friction that's set for the player. I've added a couple of uh, ray casts 
in order to detect collision and what that allows me to do is work out whether or not you're on the left wall or on the right wall and change the push, push direction accordingly. Excuse me. Uh, the reason why that's important is because when the player presses jump you want to push them away from the wall slightly before they continue to go up. The only thing it doesn't really let me do at the moment is just move away from the wall that I'm sliding down. You can only actually jump off it because it doesn't detect any input whatsoever, left or right. The way that you can transition into a wall jump is basically from the air. So if you're on the floor, we have this bit before where you are transitioning to idle or run, but if you are on the wall, uh, and crucially if your velocity is not going up as in you're not you're not going upwards because otherwise it slows down your jump and it goes completely mental so you're, you're looking for a downward velocity before you would transition to a wall slide it's now thursday day three and i'm starting to think about pixel art Specifically, I want to look at working on my character, my main player character today. And I'm looking at uh, my mood board here. I have a bunch of images that I really like the sort of feel of the game, sort of dark, moody uh, kind of atmosphere. I've also found a couple of palettes from Low Spec, which I really like the look of. I'm thinking I might go with this Lost Century, but I'm a bit concerned about there's not very many deep dark colours within it, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. I've started um, mocking up my character. I think it looks fairly okay so far. Pretty pleased with it. Um, my only concern at the moment is my colour palette has so few colours that actually trying to create any kind of definition is actually a little bit difficult, so uh, yeah, I might end up having to change it and also I've got no idea whether or not this is the right sort of size each one of these blocks is 16 by 16 pixels I was trying to create my character to be about 24 pixel size so like a block and a half and I've kind of got it right uh, he's a little bit under uh, I'm not sure I, I might put him in the game and see what he looks like um, and yeah see how it feels so I've added him into my game my level prototype and I he looks okay I think it, the size is about right um, I think it will work okay once I've got some animations in and yeah should be okay so I've worked up my hero a little bit now and here he is I've given him a jacket and a sort of a red shirt and yeah I've worked out the colors a little bit better I think kind of got this grey hair aesthetic going on and I've also um, developed up some various different frames for an idle animation. I'm quite pleased with that actually. I've tweaked the idle animation ever so slightly by giving him some shading on his legs. Uh, I've also created a run animation which I'm really pleased with. And his first attack animation. Which I'm not I'm, I'm quite pleased with it, but he feels a little bit static in his body, so I might end up tweaking that um, later on. I was going to call it a night when I thought, do you know what, I'm going to start tackling the ground art as well. Um, and I have to say that the new feature in 1.3 uh, beta of A Sprite that allows you to do tile maps is absolutely brilliant. Um, I've defined a few here really simple if I wanted to have it create another platform I just draw that in like that uh, let's say it needs to have some grass on the top a couple of clicks there um, I've got some little sort of edge states here and then I've got a couple of underneath kind of clippery clippy bits I guess just slight variations on the two things and uh, boom there we go and you can see here it's it's created another platform and you can see exactly which tiles are being used where. And the really cool thing about it is the fact that you can go into any tile you like, um, make sure you are editing that tile. And as you draw on it, it draws on every single tile of that tile. It is brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's really easy to create tiling patterns um, because effectively all you're doing is just drawing across a grid line. Uh, in fact, if you view the grid, see 
you can see the actual grid lines. If I were to create a, uh, a splodge here, and I want that splodge to kind of do this for whatever reason, because that was a bit crazy. You can see it's obviously going over the, um, the edge, but the actual tile itself gets painted on individually. I mean, how cool is that? It is day four and I'm doing more pixel art. Um, I'm probably doing too much pixel art actually. I'm a little bit, a bit concerned about timings and how much time I've actually got to do this. Uh, but I've tweaked the first attack animation. Uh, I've added a sideways motion so he sort of steps into the attack, turns a bit more. I think this looks a bit better. I've also created a second attack. Uh, with the idea being that this would be comboed in from the first attack, so you'd be halfway through the first attack, you press the attack button again, and you'll get this sort of sideways slash. And then the third attack being an overhead slam, like an overhead ground slam, and again, you'd, you'd be halfway through the second attack, press the combo button again, and you get this attack. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Uh, you can run, uh, I obviously don't have animations to jump, but check out these attack animations how cool is that if you press it once it goes back to idle state press it multiple times it'll play uh, the animations in sequence love it I thought just before I uh, clock off for the night um, I would add in controller support for my character should be fairly straightforward Okay, I've got my 8-bit Doe controller here, and as you can see, works really well. It already feels way better to be using a controller. Superb, love it. Okay, I'm going to call this video here, guys. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to see more from this game series. And I will hopefully see you in the next one.